may not realize it, but design is something that many of us do in our day-to-day -day lives. I'm Ross Briscoe. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Strathclyde, Department of Design, Manufacture and Engineering Management. I specialize in engineering design, which is sometimes known as industrial design or product design. And I'm looking at collaborative design technologies. So which technologies can help us within the collaborative design process? And what I'm going to talk about today is a little bit about current technologies and then about future technologies that we might use in the future as well. So many people think that design is about the creation of products and services. And you might be true, but there's a lot more that happens behind the scenes as well. As Tim Brown from IDO, a very famous product company, has said, design is everywhere. Inevitably, everyone is a, a, is a designer. And what he means there is that anyone can take design thinking techniques that designers use every day and apply them in their day-to-day -day life. And hopefully that's what I'll convey to you just now. What a designer does essentially, at least at the beginning, is to explore problems, explore solutions, and then make decisions on the best way to solve that problem. So designers go through a design process. It tends to be iterative, one step leading to the next, from a problem to a solution. But what happens when we have complexities? Well, we need iteration within the process, and there might also be convergence in the process as well. And how do we solve that complexity? Well, we can do it through collaboration. And what that means is getting the outside input of other people to help with the design process. And with collaboration, that means the knowledge and the skills that other people have. Now, let's talk about how design was conducted in the past. Well, you might have one person that's responsible for designing, for making the form, for the material selection, even up until the manufacture and the selling. But nowadays, we have teams around the world that all have to work with each other. We might have teams, uh, a design team separated from the manufacturing completely. And what this might look like is design teams in Europe, uh, manufacturing labor and marketing in the East, maybe some testing and market research in the West. And this is all due to globalization. And it has really, really good benefits in terms of how we communicate with each other and how we collaborate with each other, which is facilitated by technology. But it's not only about business cases of reducing cost and optimizing time. It's about how we communicate with each other and overcoming barriers. For example, you might have a problem based in Europe and somewhere halfway around the world will, be, will have already solved that problem and will be able to give you advice on how to for your own projects as well. Of course, it's not all good things. There are technological problems leading to social and cultural misunderstandings. Uh, as our speaker there was talking about. Uh, lack of sense of control within big projects. We all want to come together. We all want to be the person to spearhead it, but we all have to share that in some way. There's a greater need for organization online as you're sending documents back and forth. There's also personal versus project priorities uh, where there's a common goal everyone's working towards, but there's also individual goals that every team member has. But also me talking to you here in this room just now, we have a sense of presence. I can look you in the eye and you can look back at me and we can have a conversation. And online, that's really difficult to replicate. And so what are the factors that really influence our collaboration? Well, it's how we communicate with each other and the methods we choose to communicate. It's the environment in which we work, whether it's free or restricted in some way due to copyright or something else. It's the resources that we call upon and the availability of these resources to contribute towards our own projects. It's the membership characteristics, so the people that hold the knowledge and the skills. And it's the process and structure that we implement, so our communication process, but also our process of the design process as well. And as I mentioned just earlier, it's all about the purpose. We're all working towards a common goal, and we all need to be coherent with that within our teams. And so on the theme of Inside Out, it's all about the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, and the opinions of other people that drive our projects. If we only de uh, design with our own thoughts and feelings, then the product's only going to be suitable for ourselves. We need other people's input. So let's talk about technology and how it's evolved. In the past, you might have written a letter to design a project, uh, design a product. And you might have attached some sketches, some drawings, some engineering drawing files, and you would have posted it off. And that person would have received it after several days and wrote their response, annotated maybe on the sketches, and sent it back to you. And it was a really unpopular way of collaborating because it took so long and through the postal service. And we call this asynchronous uh, design, meaning happening at different times. 
And now, with the invention of phone calls and uh, computer technology and with the reduced cost of that, it became much more popular to collaborate with each other because we could do it instantaneously. And we call this synchronous because it happens at the same time. And today, we still have the same two methods, asynchronous and synchronous communication. I'm going to talk you through some of those technologies, which I'm sure you'll recognize. Messaging being one of the most popular. You can have instant messengers or email or something like this. And this originated in 1967 at Stanford University. This is the original picture of researchers discovering how messages could be sent over a network. But nowadays, we have phones which can also mimic this messaging. We can now send detail and complex communications to each other with pictures, GIFs, uh, emojis to help with the understanding of a message as well. It's become a really popular way of collaborating. Video conferencing, similar, originated in 1988. And this is the first video conferencing system. You can see the three Mac computers there that were used to control the interface of the, uh, interface of the computer and a lot more computing power happening behind the scenes as well. And similarly now, we can shrink that down to the size of a mobile phone. We can share our screens with each other to show each other what we're seeing. We can uh, really communicate on a personal level using video conferencing. And we use it socially, but we also use it professionally and academic, academically as well. And now I'm going to talk about a few more uh, design-specific technologies. Everyone's heard of Wikipedia. Well, a wiki is the technology used. It's an editable page <laughs> that you can use to uh, change and to update things. This project is called WikiHouse. It's an open source house wiki where architects, civil designers, and other people come together to create the plans for an open source house. And this is one of the modules here that you can see. The different modules were made with different room requirements, and you can stack the modules together for the size of house that you require. And what the wiki allowed people to do was to collaborate on the uh, creation of these parts, make design decisions together for the best solution, and it's been really successful and they're still continuing on today. So I'm going to talk about uh, forms and message boards as well. They're very similar to wikis and what they offer is the ability to have a conversation to someone. So rather than an editable page, it talks of a conversation, a talk and response. And the thing about wikis is uh, the forms and message boards and wikis is they're all kind of gone out of vogue now with new web 2.0 technologies. And so we'll talk about them just now. Who here has read Fifty Shades of Grey? Or who has at least heard of Fifty Shades of Grey? Hands up, come on. Bit of audience participation. Well, this is Diamond Club, and it was a product that was created as a spoof of the Fifty Shades of Grey phenomenon. Um, it was used collaborative document editors, such as Google Docs and Microsoft Office, to create coherent chapters towards a coherent storyline. But in fact, most of the people that actually wrote the book had never read the full thing before it was published. Rather than an incoherent mess, though, it actually made sense for this type of product, for this uh, project. And it reached fourth in the iTunes bookstore in the US and actually had genuine five-star reviews as well. Social network sites as well are really popular. Who uses social network sites when they're doing group work in university as well? Please give us a show of hands. It's probably the most popular way that students communicate with each other just now. And one example of how this has worked really well is through Facebook. And Facebook has released Workplaces, which is a walled garden um, for different companies to set up their own Facebook with all the same features and functionality. Starbucks was one of the first partners which collaborated with this, and they shared the example of how a store manager shared that they were selling a lot of drinks that were featured on Instagram, a specific drink in particular. And other managers also said, yeah, I've been selling loads of these as well, but we're not quite sure what the recipe is. Well, Starbucks was able to confirm the recipe very quickly because of this uh, method, and because of the popularity, they decided to make it part of the official menu. And this is a decision that might have taken weeks or months in the past, but in fact has been reduced down to one day. And that shows the power that technology can have in our day-to-day -day lives and our, in our business lives. And on that last example as well, thinking about inside out, thinking about uh, the thoughts, the feelings, the opinions of other people and how they influence us, uh, we need to bear this in mind when we're doing our projects with people. So here's some up and coming technologies. You might have heard of Slack, but team management software is in vogue right now. Everyone's using it and there's a lot that are coming out daily. Slack is one that uses hashtags to code information so that it's easily searchable later. But what it shows is a trend in our society away from bigger platforms such as Facebook and towards smaller platforms with specific functionality. 
The next generation are known as the Snapchat generation because they want to use smaller platforms with specific functionality such as sharing pictures rather than all the different things that Facebook allows them to do. And what this, the question that we then need to ask is, how will the next generation want to be taught in our academic situations? And then how will they want to be supported in industry? Because they'll have built up all these social skills using these platforms, and we'll want to be able to give them the power to utilize that in an industry setting. Virtual reality is also becoming really popular just now within games and multimedia, but we've not really seen it emerge as a business case either. But Facebook is one company that's working towards changing that with Facebook Spaces. It's a VR environment that allows you to represent yourself as an avatar and then imagine being able to create something in 3D with other people around the world and then discuss it and change it. And, uh, it becomes a really valuable platform in that case and the value proposition is really obvious there. Telepresence as well is growing in popularity. We talked about video conferencing, but imagine being able to contribute uh, within a meeting, within a telepresence device, or take a tour around a, a, a museum, or even being able to appear live on a stage as well. But what if we take telepresence one step further? What if we could then transpose ourselves within a robotic device? It's almost a step of teleportation, where we're able to be in one place, but we can alter reality in another place. We're able to interact with people, maybe test some products, maybe contribute to the construction of a product as well. And perhaps once you can design for anywhere, uh, once you can be anywhere, you might design for anywhere. And that's where we might have distributed manufacturing. NASA and partners are currently working on zero G manufacturing within 3D printing. So imagine a designer on Earth coming up with a concept and making the CAD files and sending up to the International Space Station where they're able to print it out and utilize it. And you can see a little example of a little wrench that was created. And so the question is, how do we get there? From my perspective, it needs to come in the way that we teach students and how students learn. We need to give students the opportunity to explore technologies within academia so that when they go into industry, they have a good understanding of their collaborative abilities. This also needs to be supported in industry though. We need to give industry, uh, within industry, there needs to be the flexibility to utilize skills and get rid of some restrictions as well within copyright and, and the such. But this is really difficult. It sounds really easy when I'm talking about it, but it's really difficult to implement. A paradigm shift needs to happen. Imagine everyone conducting business today to change from email to something else. It would be absolutely incredible. So what can you do just now? Well. I want you to go away and I want you to be a designer. Explore problems, explore solutions, and see what decisions you can make towards that. Challenge the trusted tools that you're already given and see what exists beyond. Test the technologies and see what worked, also what didn't work, but then try to replicate it afterwards. Thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed the talk and I hope you enjoy the rest of the talks today.